Hello, welcome to the news section, integrating RxJava with Activity Lifecycle. We'll start this section with a refresher on Activity and Fragment Lifecycles. Then we'll learn about what resource leaks are and how they usually happen. Finally, we'll learn how to avoid leaks in cleaning up subscriptions. Now we move on to the first video of the section, Android Activity Lifecycle. In this video, we're going to learn about fragment lifecycles, set up an activity, and learn about onCreate function calls. Activities are the core components in Android to show the user interface. In most cases, all data processing, fetching, and any other action are tied to the activity. If you want to fetch the background image over the network, you'll probably have to use the onCreate function method to start that. If there is data that you want to be updated when activity starts, a good choice will be onStart function or onResume function. There are multiple lifecycle methods, and in one of those, an observable will have to be put along with the subscriptions. Most of us will be familiar thoroughly with Android lifecycle. However, it's always useful to review this as it's a super important thing. The Android Activity Lifecycle describes an order and conditions on which the special methods like onCreate function, onStart function, onResume function, onPause function, onStop function, onDestroy function are called. Developers have to override them so that their code can get called at the points in the lifecycle specific to an activity. This figure shows the full lifecycle of the activity. At first, the activity gets created and onCreate function is called. Then, the activity gets started with the onStart function call. After it's started, it usually receives focus and onResume function is called. Obviously, onPause function, onStop function and onDestroy function are called at their respective times according to the flow mentioned before. It's worth noting that an activity that is stopped is not necessarily immediately destroyed. We'll now learn about fragment lifecycles. Activities can contain fragments, that is, self-contained units that contain views, and they have a lifecycle of their own. However, the lifecycle of a fragment is bound to the activity that contains it, so they're also tightly related. This diagram shows the lifecycle. We can see that this is very similar to the lifecycle of an activity, but there are a few new methods, such as onAttach function, onCreateView function, onActivityCreated function, onDestroyView function, onDetach function. Let's set up an activity. From the flow that we've just analysed, it can be seen that a great place to set up an activity is the onStart function call. OnStart function is a great place to initialize interactive operations. It can be a good place to start an observable subscription where the data is fetched. The logic is that OnStop function will be called if a system dialog is shown, and at this moment, there is no need to keep data updated because the user doesn't see it anyway. However, when the dialog is closed, OnStart function is called again and the data update resumes. In our case, particularly, we might want to keep it in onCreate function because we still want to keep the UI updated with the newest stock data in the background so that we have fresh info at the moment we resume the activity, even if we are briefly distracted with some kind of dialogue. Finally, onResume function is called when the activity gets focus. Before 7.0, it was almost always the case that after the onStart function is called, the onResume function is called immediately. And after onPause function is called, the onStop function will follow. This didn't only happen in cases where the new dialogue or activity didn't completely hide the previous activity. In this case, the onPause function will be called in the parent activity, but not on onStop function, because it is partly visible, as shown in this diagram. In Android 7.0, it's possible to have multiple activities and applications running side by side. In such cases, when an activity loses focus, onPause function will be called, but onStop function won't. 
there are certain things that we should know about onCreate function calls. At first, it might look that onCreate function is very straightforward. It gets called only once when an activity gets created. However, the tricky bit is that an activity can get destroyed and created, not just when it's actually started, with start activity function. An activity will also be destroyed and created when a device is rotated so that the orientation changes from landscape to portrait or vice versa, or when a system language changes. Also, if on Android 7.0, in multiple activity or application configurations, an activity space is resized. The last scenario is when hardware keyboard is popped out. In all of these cases, the currently running activity will be destroyed and created with a new configuration as a completely new instance. Obviously, the entire lifecycle will be executed when it happens. So the onPause function, onStop function, onDestroy function, onCreate function, onStart function, and finally onResume function will be called. That's all in this video. Here we learned the basics of Android Activity Lifecycle.